Hey guys, it's Marshall from Going Gear. Got a couple lights here that are kind of similar from the same company, Eagle Tac. They're both the T20 C2 Mark II, but they had different LEDs in them. So we have this one with the Cree XML T6 LED in it. This one right here with the Cree XPG S2 LED in it. Difference in the LEDs, the S2 is going to give you more of a spotlight, so it's going to be more focused. You're going to get a little bit better throw. XML T6 is going to be more spread out. It's going to light up a wider area at once, but it's not going to have quite the throw and the uh, bright hot spot of the S2. So let's open these up, show you what you get on the inside, show you the interface, take them outside, all the regular stuff. Here's the light. We'll set that to the side for right now. Instruction information, warranty information. Here's the holster. People ask me to start showing the holster, so I'll show you the holster real quick. Take the light, stick it down in there. Flap goes on top, keeps it nice and secure. Attachment for your belt, pack, whatever else you want to attach it to on the back. Point right here, you can use uh, a carabiner, a rope, or anything like that to attach it. Pull the light back out. Show you all the other accessories. Eagle Tech gives you a crazy amount of stuff, which is pretty cool. So this right here is if you want to use CR123 batteries, you can stick a couple of them in here. You can use it as a battery carrier if you want to just carry them around in this. Uh, but it's made to make two CR123s a little bit wider diameter. So they'll be about the same size as an 18650 because this will also take 18650s. CR123s are narrower than 18650s and they'll rattle around in a little bit. So if you're in a tactical situation, I personally have never been in one. <laughs> but uh, if you're in a tactical situation or you just don't like rattling, you can use this. For your one, two, threes, and it'll keep them from uh, rattling around in there, make them a little bit more snug. Got a lanyard, nice lanyard. You can use it to attach it on there. Some other stuff in here. Let's get all this out. Spare O-rings. This right here is a spare boot cover cap, glow in the dark, so you can switch that out if you'd rather have glow in the dark. This right here, if you want to remove the anti-roll ring, this thing right here. Uh, does two things anti-roll so it doesn't roll around on flat surfaces and also combat grip ring you can use it like that if you want to take that off or take the clip off or anything like that you can replace the one that's on there with this so you'll have more of a flat smooth body this right here is if you want to use it for a tail standing light you can attach it either way you can actually put it on like that I'm really lazy so I generally put it on like that because it's easier to get off and you can use it as a tail standing light but if you're going to use it um, in actual use, I'd recommend putting it on this way. It stays on there more securely, and um, but it is harder to get off. But it is more secure, stays on there a little bit better, and a little bit more stable. This right here is a diffuser. So the front of this comes off. You can unscrew the stainless steel bezel that comes on there by default. Screw the bezel on, or the uh, diffuser on there, and it'll diffuse the light out. And I'll show you a little bit later what that actually does. Right now we're going to put that back on there. Alright, the S2 version has all that same stuff. So I'm not going to go through all that again. If you really want to see it again, just uh, rewind and pretend I'm talking about the S2 version. Alright, so S2 version. Got that one. Got a couple batteries. I'm going to put a couple 18650s in there. Because I prefer 18650s. They generally give you the best run time and the same output as two CR123s. I went ahead and put a battery in the T6 the XML version, so we're going to go ahead and open this one up, show you what the inside of the lights look like on the S2. So there you can see back of the head there, inside of the battery tube. You can take it off either way, um, by the head or down by the switch, whatever you prefer. Activation for these, momentary activation on the back. So lightly press the back, you get momentary press it all the way, constant on. As you can see, as long as you're just using that switch in the back, it's not going to switch modes on you at all. If you do want to switch modes, what you do is you loosen the head, and it's going to drop it down into a lower output. Now, if you want to switch into your hidden modes when you have the head loosened, if you just tighten and loosen it, you can switch into your other modes. So you have a really low output, you have strobe, you have SOS, all the standard kind of stuff. And there's your uh, beacon flashing mode as well. Same operation on the XML version. That was the S2 version. 
So the XML version, you've got the same kind of stuff. Forward clicky, forward clicky, lightly press, click all the way for constant on, loosen the head, and then you have all the same hidden modes in there as well. So the diffusers and the filters that I was talking about, diffuser comes with it. Let's go ahead and uh, since the XML is already kind of diffused, take the bezel off of the S2 version and then screw the diffuser on there. And we'll drop into a lower output just so you can see a little bit better. You can see it just really diffuses the beam, spreads it out really well. It's really nice for up close kind of stuff if you're reading with it or uh, doing up close kind of work. It's really nice because you don't have that bright hot spot. It spreads it out really well. I think it's super, super useful. So that is the diffuser. comes with both models. They have filters available as well. Uh, red, blue, and green. So we have, I forget what color this is. <laughs> Let me hold it up to the light. That one is green. So let's uh, screw this on. I'm going to have to turn the exposure way down for just a second. Because in previous videos you couldn't tell what color it was. Let's turn the exposure way down. And there you can see, there is your green filter. And the center of it looks white. Um, it's just because the camera can't compensate for it very well. It is actually green. So all the light will be green. And like I said, there are red and blue available as well. And they'll fit either light. Actually, when I pull it back, you can see that it is all green. All right, let's turn the exposure back up. So I show you some more of the optional accessories. So those are the filters and the diffuser. Diffuser comes with it. Filters are optional. This right here, you have a remote pressure switch if you want to use that. People have said that I don't really show those in the videos, and they're right, I don't. So I'm going to show one real quick. Take that off the back. Screw it on right there. So this is for mounting to a weapon. I've actually had people use these on bikes for their handlebars. Um, you can use it however you want, but it's, it's intended for a weapon. These are made to be uh, shock mounted and all that so they can handle recoil and any of that kind of stuff. So you've got the remote switch, press it, and you get your momentary activation. You can see you have a switch on the side back here that if you click that, you actually get constant on. So you have both. You can use it either way. And then they have the mounts for them as well for uh, standard Picatinny mount. Pretty much the same mount that you can get from most companies. So there you go. Those are the lights. We are going to go ahead and take both of them outside and we'll show you how they do outside and show you how they compare to each other outside. Okay, we're out here with the two T20 C2 models. Got the big 40 mag light that I always use. And uh, let's go ahead and give that mag light a shot first. See how it does. There's a little bush 15 feet away. Tree out there at 100 feet. Same as always, not that great. All right, let's try out those two T20 models. There's your XPG model first. So you can see a really tight, focused beam on that one. Great throw, but you can see it's pretty focused. So once you get out past distances of, uh, I'd say probably 50 to 60 yards, um, that's when you're gonna start losing a lot of the illumination of the side spill and you're gonna be relying on that hot spot. So it's great for throw, it's great for lighting up, uh, single targets if you want to do that, but a uh, wide area kind of stuff doesn't work as well as the other one, the XML version. You can see how much larger the hotspot is on that one. A whole lot more light there in the center. Hotspot isn't as quite as isn't quite as bright, so you're not going to get quite the same throw. But you can see lights up a wider area at once. A little bit better transition from the hotspot to the spill. Shine that around a little bit, just so you can see. All right, so that's it at kind of the closer distances. We'll see how it does at longer distances. Before we do the distances, I wanted to show you what the uh, filter and diffusers look like, just so you can get an idea of the difference in beams. So we're gonna be using the XML version. You're gonna get the same kind of effect with the XPG version. So there it is without anything on it. There is a green filter. Obviously turns everything green. <laughs> And you're going to get the same kind of effect with the red or the blue filters. Pop that back off and then put the diffuser on there. 
which like I said, I really, really like. You can see it just smooths everything out. Great for just lighting up everything in front of you. Of course, it takes away most of the throw. You're gonna eliminate a lot of your distance kind of stuff, but uh, for a good, I'd say probably close to 100 yards, it's just gonna light up just all kinds of what's going on in front of you. All right, let's try the distances now. Okay, here are the two T20 C2 models. Still got the big 40 mag light. Let's try the mag light out first. 50 yards, that's my house, does okay. 100 yards, can't see anything. All right, we're gonna do the XPG version of the T20 first. There you can see, it actually does pretty well. Out at 100 yards, you can see all the details of the tree. It's lit up really, really well. Decent amount of spill on it. Shine it around a little bit. Solid little light. All right, here is the XML version. There you go, even wider hotspot on that one. See that tree, tree still lit up really well. Good spill on it. Pretty decent amount of throw, considering that you have pretty much the same light as the, uh, the XPG version, but a much larger LED. So there you go, those are the two versions of the Eagle Tac T20 C2 that we have, the XPG and the XML versions. If you like either one, you can get them from us at goinggear.com. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. We do stuff like this all the time. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach us in the comments or at goinggear.com. And since I forgot to do it, that's the XPG on the left, XML on the right. Okay.